topic of uh, my presentation today is rotation and translation invariant objects recognition with a tactile sensor. I'm Shan Lu. I come from Center of Robotics Re uh, Research from King's College London. So here is my uh, email. So first is uh, the motiv motivation of my research. So for we human beings, we have the sense of touch. So we can use our fingers to uh, touch objects or avoid injuries. So like in dark rooms or in uh, narrow space. So we, uh, the sense of touch is very useful, especially for the uh, locations where uh, the vision is occluded. So we want to uh, enable robots to have the sense of touch as well. Uh, so for robotic haptic system, so we divide it into two systems. So one is the hard hardware. So we use the tactile sensors to encode the information from all sides. Uh, the second one is the software. So we want to process uh, this information from all sides to encode uh, this information. Um, so our research uh, is focusing on software to proceed uh, the information. So one of the uh, most uh, important applications is to uh, recognize shapes of objects. So that's our topic. So let's uh, browse the um, past research. So some of the researchers uh, did some research about the shape um, recognition with tactile sensors. So First is the local shape. So uh, some of the researchers are doing the research from points. So like, sorry. So like here, um, there are two points on the object. So we use some uh, four sensors or some simple tactile sensors to uh, to touch the object. So from these uh, points, we can get the uh, normal forces. So we can get the uh, curvatures of objects. So we can infer uh, the shape, the local shape. But uh, this method is lim limited to uh, algebraic uh, shapes. So some other researchers are using the uh, tactile irons. Uh, so some of the researchers are doing uh, research with conver convergence uh, analysis. So here you can say uh, with um, tactile array, so we analyze uh, the pressure distributed on this area, so we can get more information. So from our research, we use the second uh, method, so we can get more information. So for the global shape, some researchers are, use, um, are using the com uh, computer graphics method. Uh, so, so like here, we have uh, many points uh, we can get from the object uh, with uh, normal forces. So from these points, we can get uh, we can reconstruct the surfaces of the object. So this method is from computer graphics, but it's um, it's com computation and time consuming, and it can't uh, catch key features. You have to get many points to get the uh, object surface. So. Uh, we propose one method uh, called Diagonal Features Framework. Uh, actually, this framework is from the computer vision. So, to be brief, so on the left, we can see there are many tactile readings. So we treat them as images. So from these images, we can get many features from these images. So we can use these features as words. So we can cluster them, and we can get the tact tactile dictionary. So from this dictionary, we can allow, we can assign some words for different objects. So from these words, we can describe one object. So in more uh, details, so first we get some tested objects, and we get some text readings from them. So like here. We, we have this object, we can say there is a co corner from this object and some uh, circles from the wheels. Uh, so the second 
we can get the word, uh, some features from these images. So from these uh, obtained features, we can create the dictionary for this object pool. After that, we can assign different words to this object, so we can get uh, object uh, histograms. We can calculate the feature frequencies uh, happened in these objects. Based on this, we can classify these objects with the KN method. So for the feature extraction, so we use the shift descriptors. It's from the computer vision, but we adapt it to tactile uh, scenarios. So in standard shift, uh, we extract gra gradients from uh, this image. So uh, based, based in, uh, in this way, we can get, get it uh, rotation and uh, translation environments. But uh, in computer vision, for images, descriptors should be scale environments because the cameras has a distance to the objects. But in tactile scenarios, exact dimensions are read. So we don't have to use the scale event function. So the second one, uh, for standard shift, we have to uh, op um, obtain the instrict points first. So we, we have to get uh, the interest points. But in tactile scenarios, so we just divide the tactile image into three regions, and we use uh, each center of the sub sub patch as our interest points. So for each sub uh, sub patch we can get one shift descriptor. So it's called the tactile feature. So in this way we can apply the uh, tactile features framework. So here is the experimental evaluation. So here is our uh, setup. This is a Phantom Omni. So it's as our um, robot. So this is a robotic arm. Uh, the tactile sensor is attached to this arm. Um, for this tactile sensor, it has an array of 14 by 6 and is a resistant, resistive based. So from, from here, you can see um, we get the tactile reading from the tactile sensor, and we get the reading here. Uh, actually, there are videos here, but I don't know why it doesn't work, so I will show you from, from here. So it, just one brief introduction here. So every time you press, uh, the tactile sensor press the object so you can see the reading on the right. right. So different shapes have, have different uh, readings here. So we want to extract information from these readings. So in this way, we get the tactile readings uh, from 10 objects. So like here, the, the objects are from our daily lives and the live uh, environments. So here you can see some uh, key features from for these objects. So like the corner for, for it and the circles for the cup. So you can see there are some common features like the circles for the cups and the wheels. They are similar. Uh, but if we have more words, we can uh, classify them. Uh, so here we have some variables. So we don't uh, we don't know the exact size of uh, of the dictionary. So we increase the size of dictionary k here, and we get the overall classification accuracy. So as the size of dictionary 
increases, we get um, the accuracy increase as well. But after the dictionary size reaches um, around uh, 50, so the accuracy levels up, levels fall. And we also test the uh, different numbers of examples. Because for the test, so uh, for the classification, we just get uh, a few examples from the object. So as the uh, uh, number of samples increase, the accuracy also uh, increases. Uh, so it's in an intuitive way, because if we touch more times, so we can get better to know uh, the object. Uh, but after the number of examples reaches 10, so the accuracy levels off as well. So we get our final result with uh, the size of dictionary as 15 and the number of examples as 10. So we get the average accuracy as 91.2% uh, uh, here. So you can see we can uh, recognize these objects uh, successfully. So we reach the conclusion. So we get uh, notation and translation Invariant descriptors are, in, are extracted from tactile images that enables a robot to uh, recognize objects when it uh, moves or rotates them. Uh, second, the required number of contra uh, contacts is uh, reduced, but high accuracy can still be achieved. Uh, of course, there are, there are a lot of future work can be done. So the first the positions of the tactile sensor will be considered to uh, involve more spatial geometric information, potentially al allowing to classify more uh, complicated objects. A second, uh, the support vector machine classifier could be an alternative for the KN classifier. Thanks. Any questions? <laughs>